today on Create with Kiana, a crash course on photography. All right, so I'm going to head out and take a couple pictures and then show you how they look a little bit different, how the settings affect actual images. And then we're gonna take them and show you some really quick editing tricks on how to just touch up your photos and take them from being pretty cool to being absolutely mind blowing. Hey, so I came out to shoot some pictures in nature because it's a beautiful day and um, it's kind of the perfect time of year to go on a nature hike because there's no mosquitoes yet. So I'm out at Christy Lake right now, which is a nice little trail that has some really beautiful views. And I wanna talk about framing a picture. So of course, obviously you can play with the settings as much as you want, but if you don't have a good picture to start with, you can't really make it good. So one of the things to think about when you're framing something is you usually wanna put whatever your focal point is on the third. So here I have a photo that I shot and obviously the path is kind of my focal point. So I put the end of the path close to the third here. And you can see another tip is to zoom with your feet. So instead of taking a photo from far away and then cropping it in, I actually walked with my feet to zoom this one in to a more pleasing crop. This way you never lose quality in your photos. In your shooting, you also wanna think about where the light is coming from and how that's gonna impact your image. So for right now, like if you look, the sun is up there. So it's kind of coming at me from the side. You'll see like one side of my face is a lot brighter than the other side of my face. Also think about if the light is behind or in front of the person. Usually if you're doing like a portrait, you'd want the light to be in front of the person so that you can see their features. But maybe you're going for more of a silhouette effect. In that case, you'd want it to be more backlit and you'd want the light to be more behind them. Same thing with if you're taking pictures of things in nature. For example, this shot here would actually probably look a lot better if we did this and shot it this way. Now the light's coming down at me from the front. This way I'm a lot more lit evenly um, and you're not getting any of that backlighting going on. You're not getting those shadows, so. So now that we've looked at how to frame a photo, let's check out what different settings we can use and how those might change how our pictures look. All right, so in order to understand how to use the manual mode and the settings on your camera, you have to know a little bit about how a camera works. So here's a really quick and dirty explanation. So the front of your camera, you have the lens. This just controls the focus. So that controls what part of your picture is in focus. Next up, you have your aperture. This is basically like your pupil. So it's just like a ring that can open or close to let more or less light in. And it is measured in things called f-stops. Um, and basically, the lower the number, the more light it's letting in. The next parameter you've got is you've got a shutter. So that's the part of the camera that's like closed and then when you press the shutter release, what it does is it opens for a tiny second, lets the light in and then closes again to block the light. So that's your shutter and it's controlled on your camera by something called your shutter speed, which is measured in fractions of a second. Now the shutter speed controls both how much light is let in, but it also controls how much movement the camera catches. For example, if I have a shutter speed that is one second, so that means this shutter is opening for a full second, so it's opening one Mississippi and then closing again. Um, in that time, a lot of things can move, right? I can move my hands a whole lot in one Mississippi, so I could go one Mississippi and wave, right? I moved my hand back and forth like three times. So if I had that shutter speed set at one second, my hand is gonna look all blurry because my hand moved a whole bunch in that time. And so the camera caught all of these movements and that turns into blur. To show what that looks like, this picture here was taken at a very um, slow shutter speed, 1 over 60, and it's nice and blurry. Whereas this one over here is much crisper because it was taken at a faster shutter speed. This one was taken at 1 one hundredth of a second, so it's nice and crisp. Um, so these guys here are measured in fractions of a second. Now, if you're shooting something that's moving really fast, like a car or a sporting event or an animal, you're going to want this to be way, way faster. So maybe like one thirty-two hundredth of a second. So it's just going super fast, opening, closing, and just capturing that little frozen moment of time instead of getting anything blurry where the movement is happening. Then we have our film or our image sensor. Most things today are shot on a digital camera which has an image sensor here, which is basically just um, a collection of pixels that are light sensitive. So when light hits them, they can save that information and that's what's put together into your image. Um, back in the day, this is where the film would be. And this one here is measured in what's called ISO, 
which is like a measurement of the light sensitivity. Um, the trade-off with this, so the more sensitive it is to light, obviously the faster you can make this, the more you can play with this, the more freedom you have, but also the more sensitive to light it is, the more noise or grain you get. And that is like kind of those little flecks that appear in your picture, bigger chunks that you can see instead of being really, really smooth and crisp. All right, so I found this beautiful little lookout right here. So I'm going to take a couple different shots. First of all, I'm going to adjust my ISO. So that's my sensitivity. So we're outside. So a good place to have your ISO when you're outside is 100. That's like kind of the lowest you can go. That's going to be the least sensitive. So you're going to get the crispest pictures with no grain almost or no noise. So I'm going to set that. And then I'm going to turn my... I'm still on my aperture priority mode, which is my little A. I'm gonna close this guy right up. So the aperture, like I said, is like this little pupil and it lets more or less light in, but it also controls how much of your image is in focus. So what that means is sometimes you'll have a tiny sliver of your picture that's in focus and sometimes you'll have a really deep section. So right now, if you look at my picture, I'm in focus. But if I come too close like this, suddenly I'm slightly out of focus because my camera has about three feet worth of depth of focus right now at the current aperture that's set. So three feet in front of my camera, that's the part that's in focus. And if I get outside of that zone, I start to go out of focus. So we've got the same kind of thing happening here. So I've got a camera, it's looking at a picture. In order to have all these things be in focus, I'm probably at like an F11, let's say, or even higher. Some cameras go even higher. So this is really good for landscapes, outdoor shots, things like that. That's when you want to have a really high f-stop because it'll make more of your picture in focus. So if you're taking pictures of like a bunch of trees disappearing into the distance, they'll all be nicely in focus instead of just the first two. That's my example. But maybe I'm taking a picture of a person and I don't really want the trees in focus and I don't really want the flowers in focus because this picture is all about the person and I want them to be the focal point of my picture. Well, a good trick is simply to take my f-stop and turn it to something nice and low, like an f2. And what this is gonna do is now only this little bit of my picture is gonna be in focus where my person is. And all of this stuff here is just gonna be a little bit blurry that that person is the focal point of our image. This also works really well if you're taking like close-up shots of something, you'll want to have a nice low aperture because it'll give you that nice blurred background. So that whatever you're taking the picture of becomes a focal point and everything that's not important suddenly is less distracting. A, I'm gonna close this guy right up, like F20. Um, what that's gonna do is make a huge range of depth be in focus. So now I can take this picture out across the lake and I can have the trees on this side of the lake and the trees on the other side of the lake all be in focus. And I'm also gonna do some where I open it up a little bit. So I'm gonna bring my f-stop nice and open up to like a 2.8. And what I'm gonna do is I want this little birch tree in the front here, I want him in focus. And I'm gonna get this birch tree to be more in focus than the rest of the background so that the background's not as distracting. Awesome, okay, I got one here that's nice and sharp, so I'm gonna take another wander and see what other kind of cool lookouts I can find. So here's another one I shot of the path where I used the f-stop to really emphasize the focal point. Let's see how edits can also help emphasize our focal points. Okay, so here I'm just going to walk through a couple of my favorite edits. I'm doing this in Photoshop, but you can do this in just about any photo editing program. Even your phone can do most of these things. Um, so the first thing I always like to check is the exposure. So in this photo here, I'm obviously a little overexposed in this area. So that means these whites are getting washed out and you can't see any of the detail anymore. So I wanna just bring that down a touch. So this is my exposure over here. Sometimes it'll be called light or something like that. So I'm just gonna bring that down a touch, like that. And then I'm also just gonna drag these highlights down just a little bit because they are really bright as well. There we go. And I always like my images slightly overexposed. So you can still see this is still really washed out. 
Um, but that doesn't bother me because I like that like light quality in my photos. The next thing that I like to do is adjust the temperature. So that is like the warm or coolness of a photo. So you can see if I drag it this way, ooh, it gets super cold. If I drag it this way, it gets super warm. I always like to just warm it up a touch. Awesome. And then this photo here has lots of greens in it. So I really want to make those pop. So I'm just going to drag this tint over here up in the greens a little bit. So now I got this really nice brown. And I really want to focus in on this. I really like her face. So I'm going to crop this in a little bit. Just like that. Oh yeah, that's awesome. Okay. Um, and that's about it that I do for edits. So usually I'll do exposure first play with that a little bit, play with the lightness. Sometimes um, I'll play with contrast. So contrast is like the whites, how white the whites are versus how dark the darks are. Um, I don't really like, this is like a really contrasty photo. And this is what it looks like, a little softer. I always like things on the softer side. So like I might pull a little bit of that contrast out of there. Just like that. And the last thing I always like to add is this. It's called a vignette. Um, you can find this, I think iPhones can do it, um, but yeah, I think this adds like a really nice quality to your photos. So you could either like have the edges get slightly lighter to give you a nice like airy look. So this is what it looks like all the way on. Um, I like to just do it a little bit. So if I'm going for like a nice airy photo, like this one here, it's like nice and fun and airy. Um, I will pull it a little bit to the white side so that what it's doing is it's just lightening up the corners just a touch. Um, the other thing you can do if you want like a really dramatic photo, see how if you pull this over to the dark part here, it really like darkens up these corners and just draws your eye to the middle, to the middle area so much more. So that is about all that I like to do to my photos. So usually just, so yeah, overexpose a little bit, play with my temperature. I always love to warm up. I warm up all the photos I take. I love having like a white balance that's on the warm side of things. Play with the lightness a little bit if you have to, and then go over and add yourself a post-crop vignette. And that's about it.